This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God. I'm at Hope Chapel, Amy Zion Church in Utica, New York. The building is empty. And yet, when I fell on my face to pray to the Lord, I could feel his spirit moving. It is my prayer that wherever you decide to humble your heart, to get on your knees, to fall on your face before the Lord, that you will feel the spirit moving too. Because the Bible says where one or two, or two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And even though we may be together through social media, we are still together. And he is still in the midst. Good morning, beloved. I pray that this is a day that you are blessed, a day that you will never see again. That God is still in the blessing business. He still sits high and sits low and looks low. My name is Reverend Sharon Ball pastor of Hope Chapel Amy Zion Church in Utica, New York, the oldest church in the Mohawk Valley, a welcoming church. And I thank God that you are able to join me this morning to hear another message from the Lord. This morning's text comes from Mark, the first chapter, 9 through the 15th verse. And you will see these or similar words. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized of John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart the spirit descending like a, a dove on him and a voice from heaven. You are my beloved son and with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come has come near, repent, and believe the good news. And for our title this morning, Tried, Tested, and Proven. Let us pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask now that you would descend upon us God, we're asking that you would now open up our ears so that we may hear the word of God. I ask God that you would descend upon me and open up my mouth that I may speak the word of God. But Lord, what is love without acts? And so we ask, asking, Lord, that you would descend upon us so we may be empowered to do the word of God. We ask this through the only name that matters, the only name that saves, the only name that delivers and set free, Jesus Christ. Amen. tried, tested, and proven. This morning's text tells us that 
Not even the Son of God can avoid being tried, tested, and proven. After having the Holy Ghost good time in the baptismal water with John, God is, is already blessing him. God is already ordaining him for the task at hand. That same spirit where they were had where he was having a Holy Ghost good time drove him into the wilderness. What is wilderness? But a barren, dry place, a place that stresses you, experiences that push you to the edge. The wilderness is hard times, valley times. And if, not, if what you're going through in wilderness times is not enough, you'll have to contend also with some wild beast. Come on here now today. Isn't it enough that you're struggling, that you're sick, that there's a pandemic raging? Isn't that enough? You mean on top of all of that, I got to deal with wild beasts, people who act uncivilized while I'm going through a hard time. I don't know about you on today, but I've been there. I've been in some places that was hard for me, hard on my job, hard raising my children, hard with my money, hard with my health. But to top it off, I had to deal with some wild beasts. I had to deal with people who be, become uncivilized with me, talk to me any kind of way, treat me any kind of way. I'm having a hard time. Kick you when you're down type people. Stab you in the back type people. Talk about you to your neighbors. That's what I'm talking about. You're going through a hard time and you still got to deal with the wild beasts. And so... The whole world right now is going through a hard time. Oh yes, the pandemic don't care how much money you got. The pandemic don't care about your education. The pandemic don't care about how much you used to run and how, much you, how you eat right. No, today, no one escapes being tried and tested and proven. And if we look to Texas on today, they're getting a double portion of wilderness and wild beast. While the pandemic is raging, the winds and the waves and the snow is, 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 is just completely taking them over in an area that's not prepared to deal with cold weather. Texas is being tried, tested, and proven. But you know what? It's proven that some of those communities are banding together and helping each other. Some of those communities are proven that, that I don't even know my neighbor that well, but I got some electricity. You come on in with me, honey. They're going through a hard time and, and churches are opening their doors and community centers and people are really reaching out to one another. And while they're doing that, they got leadership running to Cancun. Ted Cruz thought that his family would escape being tried and tested and proven. But he don't know. Before he could get comfortable in the room, the political desert was waiting for him. And so he could not, he may escape being cold and without but he could not escape the wilderness. Let me tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm becoming clearer now on my assignment, clearer for, uh, with the call on my life. And I'm understanding that God will provide those who seek him, those who pray to him, those who are willing to listen to the word of God. He is, he is giving us the ability to, to start to try, hear me now, try to model the grace and the glory that he has so freely given us. I believe the greatest statement of God's transformational power 
in our lives is that we can model the excellence of God. And when people see our lives, they are drawn to God. What does the Bible say? If I, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll do the drawing. When you have healthy, functioning relationships, you're living out your destiny. When you are aggressively pursuing the purpose that God has for you, I believe that it is an amazing statement of God's glory, grace, and genius. But beloved, even with all those blessings, you will be tried, tested, and proven. I want to press upon you that you can become the person God has ordained you to become from the foundation of the earth. With God's unusual favor on your life. Being called a child of God is more than just giving out information. It is the ability to impact our families, our co-workers, our community. So our lives become a shining example of God's glory and grace in the earth. But again, you will be tried, you will be tested, and you will be proven. We're at the point in the text that Jesus had just been baptized and the heavens opened up and praised Jesus as the Son of God. But yet in the process, he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. This experience shows how even Jesus had to be tried, tested, and proven. And just when we think things couldn't get possibly worse, they do. Just when we set our expectations in life, the unexpected comes. Whether the storms of life comes out of nowhere, or we saw them coming, or we helped them to come, we struggle to hold on to our faith. And when we have no strength to carry on, and when disappointment and discouragement takes a hold of us, we find that the only way through it depends upon our faith and the word of God. We find that our faith is being tested as we endure suffering that may be physical, mental, social, financial, or all of the combined. Tried, tested, and proven. Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, tells us, if we cannot believe God when circumstances seem to be against us, we do not believe him at all. What are we to do when our faith is being tested? Will you pass the test? The testing of your faith is an opportunity, not an obstacle. It is God that helps our trials in life. It is to strengthen us and not destroy us. He has promised that his plans are good for us. He has promised to complete the work that he has begun. He has promised never to leave us or forsake us. He has promised to be willing, ready, and able to help in times of trouble. We must believe in the promises of God. Tried, tested, and proven. Be assured and understand that the trials and the proving of your faith will bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. So, how do we pass the test? How can we be strong and stand in our faith when the world is falling out from un under us? When there's nothing we can do, when it all lies in God's hands, how can we remain steadfast and immovable in our faith? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. When we become discouraged by struggles we face, Let's get real. We tend to spiral down, focusing on the past. We walk down memory lane. 
And with the enemy, we pick up every time anybody has hurt us. Anytime anybody has mistreated us, lied on us, and did us wrong, we pull out that violin and we play it well. God seems to be nowhere to be found. And it all seems to be questionable. We're in the midst of great suffering. But don't you know God has forgiveness for our past, grace for the present moment, and his promises is for your future. Tomorrow is not in doubt. You must be over, you cannot be overwhelmed by the future. God has put this day in front of you. You are in the word of God. Live each moment with the Lord. Remain focused on his truth. Remember, God is not a man. He cannot lie. He will give you all the grit and grace you need to not only surpass the moment, but you will be able to thrive in spite of the moment. We cannot sit back and tell God what he should be doing. As we walk in the will of God, we have to allow him to order our steps. He lights our path and lead us in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. And although you walk in the path of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because he is with you. At some point, you got to get a revelation of who you are in God. And then do the work. You have to work on yourself. That's what Lynn is all about. You have to recreate yourself, redefine yourself to line up with the very image that God has put before you, who is Jesus the Christ. Many times we are unable to move forward because we are living in a mindset that someone else has determined for us. I want you to hear me today. Many of us are living out something that someone has, has, has ordained or put on your life even when you were a child. Oh, he ain't going to be no good. He's just like his daddy. Oh, she ain't going to be no good. She's just like her mama. The devil is a liar. You are who God says you are. You do not have to be anything but a child of God and walk in the promises of his grace. We must choose for ourselves to be on the Lord's side because if we do not choose, someone will choose for us. When we are under attack, we must speak to ourselves, encourage ourselves in the Lord and let the truth set us free. We must learn new ways to think before we can master new ways to live. The devil is always playing, let's make a deal. You don't have to go to school. Skip out and be with your friends. Or you don't have to good, good grades. That ain't for you. You too cool. You don't have to start working at a minimum wage job. Welfare pays more than that. Selling drugs will get you a better deal. But Jesus understands that there is no dealing with the devil. He will pull you down every time you try to get up. Understand if you humble yourself before the Lord, you can stand before men. God wants to show himself strong through your weakness. So the testimony is, if I never had a problem, if I never had a problem, I never knew God could solve them. I never know what trust in the Lord will do. That's the testimony this morning. That is why we're being tried, tested, and proven. We go through this experience, and we do it just like Jesus. We allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. 
This Lenten season, why would anybody fast and give up food? Why would anybody stop uh, spending their money on what they desire? Why would anybody give more to the church and help their neighbors more? Why would anybody willingly put themselves in impoverished positioning? Because we know as we humble ourselves with God, we, be, uh, we are being led by the Spirit to go deeper and grow closer to him. We are made for a purpose, and without it, we will not live as children of the king. God says we cannot live by bread alone. No, it's not enough. Your guarantee, even your guaranteed survival is not enough. Do you remember the children of Israel in the desert? God gave them food every day, manna from heaven, clothes that never wore out. And yet they complained every single day because we don't live by bread alone. Without purpose in our lives. And how do we get purpose? By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. It is the word of God that you gain meaning and wisdom. It is the word that gives life, strength, peace. It cleanses. It works on our spiritual and emotional life to produce joy and rejoicing. The word is able to build you up and give you inheritance among all those who are sanctified, spiritually prosperous and success will come to you if you consistently meditate on the word of God, that you are able to observe everything that God is bringing you to. The biblical text tells us, for then will you make your way prosperous and then will have good success, even when you are tried, tested, and proven. God has a way, if he can bring us to it, he can bring you through it. Oh, that's the kind of God we need in times like these. To know, I don't care what the television say. I don't care what Facebook say. I don't care what my friends say. I know that even though I need grit to survive the moment, he give me grace to thrive in spite of it. That's the kind of God we serve on today. When we're tried, tested, and proven, we know that the devil can take their best shot. And we can still be standing. And even if we fall down, we get up. We like weevils. We don't, we don't stay down. We always get up. That's what being tried, tested, and proven is all about. I pray that wherever you are in the process, whether you're being tried, whether you're being tested, or beloved, or whether you have already proved that you can take it, wherever you are in the process, I pray that you continue to depend and lean on Jesus. And if you're having trouble with your trials, if you are buckling when you're being tested, and the only thing that's happening with being proven is that you're broken. If that's where you are on today, I want you to know that is not the end of the story. That God has another way for you. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you not might be saved, you shall be saved. Right now, beloved, you can have his salvation right now. I don't want you to even think that it's for someone else. It's for you and you ain't got to try to get ready. You don't have to try to get right. Just confess and believe. God will give you the ability to do the rest. And so I ask on today that that's what you do. And, it, and if you need a church home and you live in the Utica area, go to Hope Chapel, amezion.org, and you can get the information. Somebody will get back with you and pray. If you don't live in this area, I ask you to look for a Bible-believing church. 
You can join Hope, Hope Chapel during the pandemic, but when this is over, and it will be over, you're going to need to get in the fellowship, not Facebook, in the fellowship of believers. Amen? I want to give you this blessing. May God who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit and you be raised with him in glory. Let us have the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. The only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, and dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. And let the church say, amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you.